Hello, today we are going to discuss about the chemical vapor deposition process. In the last lecture, we have discussed about the physical vapor deposition process. So, in this particular process, we are going to discuss that how we are doing the coatings, how we are doing the modifications of the surface. Uh, the only difference in between the physical vapor depositions and the chemical vapor deposition is that in the physical vapor depositions, just we have made certain kind of uh, atoms or maybe the plasma and just we have deposited those onto the substrate itself. But here we are going to see that how we are making this kind of atoms or maybe plasma or any kind of gas which can react with the substrate itself and do the modifications. So, that is why it is called the chemical vapor depositions because they are a certain kind of chemical reactions is relate with this process. So, here first we have to know that what is the chemical vapor deposition means. So, in chemical vapor deposition process solid material is deposited from a vapor by a chemical reactions occurring on or in the vicinity, vicinity of a normally heated substrate. So, whatever I have explained already in the physical vapor depositions just we are creating certain kind of molecules, certain kind of atoms, certain kind of uh, plasma and then we are depositing those onto the substrate. But in chemical vapor depositions we are making certain kind of gases or maybe certain kind of materials which will react with the substrate itself and make the coating. So, the resulting solid materials is in the form of a thin film powder or maybe the single crystal. So, we can get the modifications by these techniques or maybe but by this way itself rather we can say. So, what are the key factors in the CBD system? First one is called the substrate material which we are going to coat or maybe which we are going to modify. Next is that substrate temperature that what is the temperature it can sustain or maybe the what the temperature I can put my substrate so that it will not change its any kind of properties um, means like uh, physical properties or maybe the chemical properties. Next one is called the composition of reaction gas mixture. So, what type of gas I am going to use that either I can take a single gas or maybe I can take a multiple gases too. So, that they can mix together they can form a new materials that materials can react with the substrate and and do the coatings. And then last one is the total pressure gas flows. So, supports the growth of materials with a wide range of physical, tribological and chemical properties. So, by doing this CBD process we can do or maybe we can change these properties onto the material itself. So, from this particular figure we can understand that there is certain kind of precursors which is the reagent in gas phases, then the gas is flowing, then there is some kind of adsorptions and surface reactions is taking place with the substrate itself and then at last the film is growing onto the substrate materials and release of volatile byproducts, maybe some kind of toxic gases or maybe some kind of impurities in the form of gases. It can come out from the surface itself so that we are getting a virgin material coating onto the top of the surface. So, here it is a general idea that about the constructions of the CBD systems means chemical vapor deposition systems. What are these? First, we are having uh, some reaction gas dispensing system. So, after when the reaction will take place, so all the products through these channels or maybe through these dispensing systems because we are having certain kind of flow meter, we are having certain kind of gas bottle, then we are having sublimator, we are having generator. So, we are having evaporator. So, the thing is that when the mixing is taking place, if there is any humidity, it can remove those humidity. If it is having some kind of impurity, it can uh, um, uh, subtract those impurities. Not only that, it can, uh, there is certain kind of flow meter by which we can control the flow of that particular gases onto the substrate itself, then at last we have to purge it onto the uh, substrate or maybe the onto the system. Then we are introducing some kind of reactor which is including the components for defining the gas flow. So, by which we can put the gas into the system, we can do the mixing of the system, it is totally the uh, automatic process, not only that we can control the percentage of mixing of the gases into that system, we can agitate the gases. So, just like it is the head of the family 
and another thing is that here we are having another exhaust systems containing a total pressure controller vacuum pump scrubber reactant recycling system that means whatever the uh, impurities or maybe the whatever the moistures or maybe the whatever the other means which is not required for this particular reactions that can be taken out and that can be thrown outside by this exhaust system. Next we are having uh, some sequence or maybe we are following some kind of sequence for the gas transport and the reaction process. What are those? First is that transport of reactants by forced convections to the deposition region. So, here this is our susceptor, then we are putting certain kind of wafer, that wafer is actually that the material. Then transport of reactants by diffusion from the main gas stream through the boundary layer of the wafer surface, absorption of reactants on the wafer surface. So, the thing is that initially I am having one chamber in which I am putting my substrate which is known the wafer over here, then I am injecting the reactive gases over there. But the problem is that that reactive gases may be directly not come into the contact onto the surface or maybe the wafer. So, that is why we are using certain kind of forced gases or maybe generally we are um, calling it as a carrier gases which will take those reactive gases with itself and then it will come it will do the reactions and the role of the carrier gases is to just to carry those reactive gases inside the chamber and take out from the chamber itself. So, adsorption process of reactants on the wafer surface, surface processes including chemical decompositions or reactions, surface migrations to attachment sites such as atomic level ledges and kinks, site incorporations and other surface reactions. Kinks means there is certain kind of maybe holes or maybe pores or maybe certain kind of scratches. So, by which we can do the modifications. Desorptions of byproducts from the surface, transport of byproducts by diffusion through the boundary layer and back to the main gas stream, transport of byproducts by forced convention away from the deposition regions. So, not only that carrier gas will help you to bring the reactive gases inside the chamber, sometimes whatever the uh, byproducts it will be created from the CBD chamber, it will take those byproducts means waste material from the chamber itself. Next, what are the physics behind the CBD or maybe that chemical vapor deposition machines? So, the thing is that reaction typically begins in the gas phase due to the heating. Reaction products are more reactive with substrate than with the source gases. So, suppose you are having a single gas or maybe you are having a multiple gases, those gases you are mixing properly, then those gases will directly come into the contact with the substrate itself and do some kind of chemical reactions in between those reactive gases and the substrate and then they will form a some kind of powder or maybe flame on the substrate itself. So, what are the deposition rate? So, deposition rate is generally denotes by these equations which is nothing but the K S is known as the surface reaction rate, Hg is the mass transfer coefficient and if K s is very very less than A g deposition is reaction limited and if A g is very very less than K s deposition is mass transfer limited. So, that means whatever the deposition rate that also can be controlled from the outside itself just increasing or decreasing the volume of that um, uh, gases you are injecting inside the chamber or maybe some kind of uh, reactive gases you are putting not only that you can control the time over there so that the uh, thickness of that particular coatings can be controllable by ourselves. So, here we can see that there are two gases which is mixing properly and this is the zone, this is the some reactive gases it is forming over here which is directly coming into the contact with the substrate. Maybe, maybe this gas or maybe this gas as an independent, maybe they cannot react with the substrate itself. So, when they will mixing properly, then only this product maybe can be reactive to the substrate too. So, that is also the added advantage for the CVD mechanisms. Next is the examples, examples of the CVD films. So, typically used to deposit dielectric materials like silicon dioxide, then Si3N4, other materials can also be deposited by a CVD, most common are tungsten and titanium nitride for semiconductors. Then may be aluminum, boron, carbon, cobalt, iron, molybdenum, nickel, niobium tantalum, 
So, these all are the different varieties of materials which we can put into the gaseous forms, we can modify those by this kind of materials or maybe rather we can coat this kind of materials onto our substrate too. So, the thing is that here how the attachment is going on, there are several mechanisms, chemical reactions is going on, not only that when these molecules is coming from these materials directly they are coming into the contact with the surface, then they are doing certain kind of chemical reactions in between the substrate and these molecules and then they are bonding together or maybe the addition is taking place. So, this is the growth kinetics in the CVD graphene on different catalysts like case of CH4 on nickel and copper. So, now we are going to discuss about the different types of CVD process, but the thing is that till now several scientists has given this kind of classifications based on maybe the substrate, based on maybe the gas they are going to use, based on that source of energy. So, here just it is uh, particularly uh, it is uh, uh, the thing is that uh, we are trying to give this kind of classifications from our side itself. So, based on that whatever the energy we are going to use, based on the whatever the substrate we are going to use, how much pressure we are going to use, what is the sources we are going to use and what is the precursor going to to use. So, just to generalize the classifications, just to make it simpler so that the audience can get it easily. So, it is totally the our principles or maybe the our logics to classify these CBT techniques into the different forms. So, what are those? The deposition process are classified according to the following criteria. So, first one is called the energy source and activations. So, rapid thermal CBD in short form it is known as RTCVD, hot wire CVD, photo enhanced CVD, laser induced CVD, plasma en enhanced CVD, high density plasma CVD. So, from this particular case you can understand that all are coming under the CVD process, but only the energy source is different. Somewhere we are using the electron, somewhere you are using the laser, somewhere you are using the photo uh, or maybe the light or maybe somewhere we are using the thermal sources over there. Then next one we are coming to the substrate, so non-porous and the porous. So, whatever the material we are going to do, uh, we are going to get, uh, take for doing the modifications, whether these materials are porous based or maybe that is non-porous or maybe the highly uh, dense materials. Then whatever the pressure we are going to use, whether it is atmospheric pressure CBD or maybe the low pressure CBD or maybe the ultra high vacuum CBD. So, based on the pressure is applying on that particular process, we are dividing the CBD process into three types. Next one is called the hybrid sources, hybrid physical CBD, combustion CBD. So, it is a mixture of process means chemical vapor depositions in also with the attached with the physical or maybe the combustion. So, we are using certain kind of heat energy over there with the chemical vapor deposition process. Next is called the precursor metal organic CBD, aerosol assisted CBD, direct liquid injection CBD. That means, whatever the source materials you are going to take. So, based on these source materials, you can divide the CBD process into different parts. Next is called the types of CBD. So, now little bit we will going into the details of about different types of CBD processes. What are those? First one is called the atmospheric pressure CBD reactors APCVD. So, process at atmospheric pressure from the name itself we can understand that we are maintaining the atmospheric pressure for doing this particular CBD process. The reactor designs were simple yet provided high deposition rates typically at 400 degree centigrade grew flames in the form of 2000 to 3000 angstrom per minute range. So, that is the controllable limit over there and we can go up to the 400 degree centigrade, right. So, if our material is uh, less than that, then substrate is less than that temperature. So, you can easily do it from the normal to the 400 degree centigrade, but it is not go beyond that. Next one is called the low pressure CVD process or maybe in short form it is known as LPCVD. So, CVD in 0.25 to 2 torr range. So, this is the pressure actually. So, what generally we know one atmospheric pressure is 760 torr. So, either 0 0.25 into 760 torr atmospheric pressure. So, that from that to 2 into 760. So, 
that will be the range actually in the atmospheric pressure range generally we are going to use. So, here operations in the surface reaction limited regime without lowering temperature allows for stacking of wafers and higher throughput and that typically performed in 300 to 900 degree centigrade range. So, here the temperature variations is little bit bigger actually. Next is called the ultra high vacuum CVD UHVCVD process. So, extremely high vacuum eliminates contaminants from reaching surface. So, from this particular case you can understand that we are using the vacuum pump over there, we are having some delivery rail, then we are putting the gas or maybe the purging the gas inside it, then the reaction is taking place inside and then through this delivery layers that gas is going and it is depositing onto the substrate itself. Next called the aerosol assisted CBD or maybe the AA CBD process. Precursors are transported to the substrate by means of liquid or maybe the gas aerosols. Here we are not going to use any kind of gases over there, carrier gases over there. Rather this is carried out by some kind of liquid or maybe the gas aerosol. So, from the figure itself you can understand that solutions of precursors we are using, then we are having some kind of atomizer, then we are using the carrier gas, atomizer means nothing just it will give a high pressure onto those liquids so that it will come into the um, it will uh, make into the small small bubble form. They will make certain kind of small small bubble form then that bubble will directly come into this substrate and then that will deposit onto the substrate itself and we are having some heating arrangement so that it can uh, do the chemical reactions if there is any heat is required. Then they will make certain kind of flame or maybe the coating on top of the surface. Next one is called the hot wet CVD HWCVD process. HWCVD affords the capability to synthesize fluorocarbon and organosilicon thin flames. It overcomes some of the processing constraints of having a directly heated substrate. So, the, the here we are going to use certain kind of heat. So, that is why it is known as the hot wet CVD process. Then next one is called the photo enhanced CBD or maybe in short term it is called the pH CBD process. So, based on activations of the reactants in the gas or vapor phase by electromagnetic radiations, short wave ultraviolet radiations generally we are using. Selective absorptions of photonic energy by the reactant molecules or atoms initiate the process. Low temperature generally 150 degree centigrade needed to form flames like silicon dioxide greatly minimized radiation damage. So, here you can see that we are using certain kind of UV lamp chamber from where we are generating the UV source ultraviolet source over there. So, that ultraviolet source it is coming then we are purging some kind of carrier gases then that carrier gases is reacting with that alpha ultraviolet rays then they are forming certain kind of materials then that materials is going to deposit onto the substrate itself. Next is called the laser induced CVD process or maybe the LCVD process. So, allows local deposition of materials within the focus of a laser. LCVD allows one step deposition of structures with lateral dimension down to at least 1 micrometer, 3 dimensional substrates of micron size is possible. So, from this particular figure you can understand that we have given a example on CNT that means the carbon nanotubes. So, here we are putting the carbon nanotubes over here, then we are having some laser source, laser source may be either it is carbon dioxide laser, may be argon ion laser or may be NDYAG pulse laser, may be helium neon laser or maybe some kind of solid state or maybe the diode laser. So, any kind of laser source you can take over there, then that laser source you are putting, then there is having so many inlet channels where you are purging the carrier gas, where you are purging different gas which we can react properly. Then through this laser, these gases will be agitated, they will form certain kind of materials, new materials which will be deposited onto the carbon nanotubes or maybe it can make that carbon nanotubes more functionalized. So, you can make the functionalization of the carbon nanotubes by these techniques too. Next is called the direct liquid injection process. So, here precursors are in liquid form, liquid or solid dissolved in a 
convenient solvent. Liquid solutions are injected in a vaporization chamber towards injectors typically like car injectors. Then the precursor vapors are transported to the substrate in classical CBT process. The simple thing is that car injector is nothing but that when the fuel is directly coming and it is injecting into the engine itself. So, we are using certain kind of injector over there. So, that is continuously injecting that of uh, oil and air mixture and continuously the burning is taking place. The same thing we are doing over here also. So, we are we are having some kind of pressure precursor tanks where we are putting certain kind of gas pressure. So, due to that gas pressure the siphonation is taking place and directly that liquid it is going into the atom. Uh, atomization process um, or maybe generally we are calling it as a atomizer. So, where this liquid is going then a high pressure of air we are giving due to that that uh, liquid is forming small small bubbles and then that small bubbles is directly coming as a vapor and then it is depositing onto the material surface and then rest of the vapor it is going throughout the chamber. So, the thing is that here two things first I said that we are putting the material in a bubble form and then also we are using certain kind of carrier gases. So, that carrier gases will carry those molecules to the substrate itself then those molecules will react with the substrate and let rest the carrier gas will come out into the vapor form or maybe the in the gas formations. Next one is called the metal organic chemical vapor depositions or maybe the MOCVD based on metal organic precursors used to produce single or polycrystalline thin flames highly complex process for growing crystalline layers. Pressure is generally 10 to 760 torr. This technique is preferred for thermodynamically metastable alloys. So, here generally we are using certain kind of metal precursors over there, then we need a high energy source over there, then the materials we are going to deposit is this one M and here is the ligand, ligand is nothing but the functional groups of that particular materials. Then they will react with the substrate itself, then ligand will release and only the metal ions will stick with the substrate itself. Next is the latest technology that is called the CVI process that is known as the chemical vapor infiltration process. This is also a latest technology. So, what means? The means is that chemical vapor infiltration is a ceramic engineering process whereby matrix material is infiltrated into fibers performs by the use of reactive gases at elevated temperature to form fiber reinforced composites. So, not only that you can make the composites over there. So, here you cannot do the coatings of that particular materials, you can do the coating of that particular composites too. So, here the earliest use of CBI was the infiltration of fibrous alumina with chromium carbide. CBI can be applied to the production of carbon carbon composites and ceramic matrix composites. A similar techniques is chemical vapor deposition process, the main difference being that the deposition process of CBD is not on hot bulk surface while the deposition process of CBI is on porous substrate too. So, that is the basic difference in between that. So, from this particular case you can understand that inlet we are putting the chemical carrier gases and the reactant materials over there, then the carrier gases is going through this uh, fibrous materials and then that molecules is reacting inside and some molecules with the carrying gases is going out of the materials. That means, that carrier gases it can easily go inside the porous materials and then the molecules of that particular reactant materials can be absorbed inside the pores itself. Some molecules may be come out with the carrier gases. So, by this way we can do the CBI process chemical vapor infiltration. So, here we are doing the infiltration of particular molecules inside the material. Next one is called the hybrid physical CPD or maybe the HPCBD process. So, vapor deposition process that involve both chemical deposition of precursor gas and vaporization of a solid source. Main difference between the HPCBD and other CBD means it is in the heating unit both substrate and solid metal source are heated up by the heating 
module. Next one is called the rapid thermal CBD process and in the short form generally we are calling it as a RT CBD. So, use of heating lamps or other methods to rapidly heat the wafer substrate, heating only the substrate rather than the gas, chamber walls helps reduce unwanted gas phase reactions that can lead to the particle formations. So, till now just we are agitating those materials, those reactant materials, those gases, but in this particular case just we are agitating our substrate so that it will make itself as a reactive so that it can directly react with the gases and then form the any kind of layer or maybe the powder or maybe the coating onto it. Next is called the plasma enhanced CVD process or maybe the PE CVD. This is also the latest techniques and that these equipments are very, very expensive too. So, LP CVD with plasma source, ionized gas in plasma supplies energy to reactant gas, lower deposition temperature to 200 to 350 degree centigrade, good for deposition on multi-layer films sensitive to temperature. So, this is all about the plasma enhanced CVD. Next one is called the high density plasma CVD or maybe HDP CVD. So, plasma enhanced CVD with very high density plasma. So, here the density of plasma is more and then RF bias on substrate. Lower deposition temperature generally 20 to 150 degree centigrade, much lower pressure needed generally 1 to 10 milli torr is required, better quality films with less voids. So, this is the more sophisticated machines than the plasma enhanced CVD process. Then next one we are going to discuss about the combustion CBD or maybe the CCVD process. So, in this particular case it is divided into four parts. So, it is the ability to produce thin flames in the open atmospheric using vapor precursors or maybe inexpensive precursors chemical in solutions. So, generally like a painting we are using this kind of techniques over there. So, first one is called the solution preparations. Starting precursor of materials are dissolved in suitable aqueous or maybe the organic solvents. So, here we are putting the solutions over there. So, these solutions through pump it is going in uh, uh, to particular nanomizer or maybe that gun which is going to spread those materials onto the surface itself. Then in the meantime we are using certain kind of filter, maybe there is some impurities, there may be there is certain kind of humidity or maybe that there is certain kind of uh, uh, water molecules that can be absorbed directly. So, that the material the solution in a uh, dry form it will go directly to the nanomizer. And here in this particular case we are doing the atomization of that particular gas. What is that atomization or maybe atomizing gas? The solution is delivered by means of a pump up to a proprietary atomizer where it is converted into submicron droplets. So, here we are giving a high force of gases. So, through these gases these solutions in the liquid form is coming into the small small bubble form. Then directly through this flame structure then it is giving certain kind of combustions of that particular juncture. Then that flame is directly falling onto the substrate and it is making the certain kind of coating over there. So, combustion the metastable droplets are transported by a suitable gas to a flame when where they are vaporized and combusted. Deposition coatings are conveyed onto a substrate by sweeping through the flame plasma which causes the precursor to react or decompose to form the desired materials. So, like this way like welding actually. So, we are having that flame through that flame your material uh, solutions and your gases is directly coming they are forming any materials then that flame directly we are putting onto your, our substrate and we are doing certain kind of coatings over there. So, now we are going to discuss what are the considerable factors actually for selecting the different CVD process because till now I have given a brief discussions about different types of CVD processes. So, now first is that reactants used in the process, next maximum acceptable leak rate for air into the system, purity of the deposit, size and shape of the substrate and last one is called the process economy. That means whether the whole process is expensive or maybe it is cheap and not only that what type of substrate material you are going to use whether that reaction in between your uh, reactive gases and substrate material can be done or not, what are the conditions inside the chamber you require, whether you need a more pressure, less pressure, then whatever the energy source you are going to use or maybe your material can sustain 
So, depending of all those things, you have to choose the better CBD mechanisms for your particular substrate. Next key difference between the physical vapor depositions and the chemical vapor depositions. So, first for the physical vapor depositions, we have seen that highly directional depositions is taking place. So, we are having the target, then directly the material is coming by uh, using any kind of energy over there and then it is depositing onto the substrate over there. There is no or maybe any kind of chemical reactions is taking place. But from this particular figure, we are getting that it is the multidirectional deposition rates means the coating is taking place all around or from all the sides over there. Then it is a non-conformal deposition is taking place over there. Here we are getting a conformal depositions. that means we are getting a homogeneous depositions in this particular case. Then for PBD we are getting uses physical process only, here we are using the primarily the chemical process that means chemical reaction is taking place for the chemical vapor depositions. Here uses a pure source material, here for the chemical vapor deposition already I have mentioned that we can use a single material, maybe single gases or maybe there is a multiple gases, a mixture of gases, we can make the new materials inside the chamber and that new materials can be put onto the substrate itself. Next what are the advantages? Uniform distribution over large areas, no compositional gradients across substrate, no need to break vacuum for source changes, more selective area deposition because of higher activation energy for reaction with foreign substances, CBD layers always follow the contours of the substrate, they are conformal to the substrate itself. So, this is the technology, this is the all advantage for the chemical vapor deposition process. Next of course, each and everything there is certain kind of disadvantages otherwise we cannot go forward. So, what are the disadvantages for this particular CBD process? First one is called the most involved safety and contaminations that is the big problem over there that it can contaminates with the uh, source, it can contaminate uh, the materials, it can contaminate the equipment. Hybrids and carbonyls are poisonous, especially arsine. So, whatever the extract gases it is coming out, maybe that can be harmful for the environment, that can be harmful for the uh, users or maybe the operators. Metal, metal organics are pyrophoric ignite in contact with the air, maybe it is uh, uh, generating some kind of flammable gases which can directly come into the contact with the air and can ignite. High cost for compounds with sufficient purity because the precursor is little bit costly if you go for some uh, special kind of precursors over there. They are not possible for some materials means they are simply is no suitable chemical reactions. If that reactive gases will not directly uh, do the reactions with your materials, it cannot do any kind of coatings over there. They are generally not suitable for mixtures of materials. So, generally sometimes we face certain kind of problems for particular composites where maybe one material is react with the reactive gases, maybe another material is not react with that reactive gases. So, that is the one kind of disadvantages of the CBT process. So, what are the applications of the CBT techniques? Generally, we are going to use for the microelectronics purpose, conductors, passivation layers, diffusion barriers, oxidation barriers, etcetera, semiconductor lasers, optical fibers for telecommunications, optical fibers are produced by coating the inside of a few silica tube with oxides of silicon, germanium, boron, etcetera. Solar energy conversion by the utilization of selective absorbers and of thin film solar cells of silicon and gallium arsenide and dye synthesized solar cells, carbon nanotubes for advanced electronic, biological and chemical devices and detectors, wear resistant coatings have wide industrial applications coating of titanium carbide, titanium nitride, alumina on cemented carbide cutting tool inserts or titanium carbide on steels, punches, nozzles, free wheels etcetera are used extensively. Friction reduction coatings, corrosion resistant coatings like <coughs> niobium, chromium, etc. Erosion resistant coatings, heat resistant coatings like alumina, silicon carbide, high temperature superconductors for use in medical power grade high energy physics applications. Some kind of decorative coatings for example, titanium nitride gold color on watches 
whatever we are calling it as a gold plating like my watch. Then conductive coatings for integrated circuit interconnects, display applications, solar control, electrochemical windows, automotive windows. Then at last we have to come into the summary. So first in this particular lecture I have discussed about the whole CBT process, right? what the CBT means. Then I have discussed about the several types of CBT techniques generally we are following or maybe the we are uh, using. Then we ha I have already discussed that how we are going to use this CBT process, what are the selection criteria for different types of CBT process and at last we have discussed about the different types of uh, applications of that particular CBT process. So, CBD is typically used to deposit dielectric materials but can also be used for metals, its ability to deposit homogeneous films, coatings of particular nanomart particles with desired properties have revolutionized the technological aspects. So, the whole general I can say that it depends upon the substrate, it depends upon the uh, environmental conditions, it depends upon the machine criteria or maybe the our requirement, we have to choose the proper CBD for proper modification types. Thank you.